Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Terry, and I am the leader for grades seven through 12. So if you're of this age group, this includes you. Um, I'm going to begin, uh, well, first off, I should tell you that I am wearing a goat pin. And the reason I'm wearing a goat pin is I have made my selection for heifer. And I have selected a heifer with a goal of $120. Now I've already started because I have a bank. And you will have a bank available to you if you would like to um, collect money this way. And this would be your contribution. You can co uh, collect it weekly and then turn it into us. We will record how much you have on your thermometer once you have selected your animal. And what you can do for heifer is choose your animal with family members or you could get together with your friends, FaceTime them, or however you want to uh, get together with them and decide what you're going to do, say down the road for the living gift market. You boys and girls are very experienced in Hefe. It's been around for so many years. Believe it or not, it's been more than 25 years in this church alone. Now, I have um, a Bible reading I want to read to you. And it's all about Jesus and the woman of Samaria. And this is John 4 and it's verses four through 27. So bear with me on this. But he had to go through Samaria. And of course, this is Jesus we're talking about. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sikla, Sik Sitcha, near the plot, uh, plot ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried out for, by his journey, tied out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. In parentheses, it said, his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? A parentheses again, Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep going or keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go. Call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on the mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father and neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Thus ended the reading. 
Now, there are some questions that I want you to ponder. Determine why the disciples were so, so shocked that Jesus was talking with this woman. We know that many of their concerns with her were also reasons others rejected her. So I want you to think about that a little bit. Now, here's another question for you. How was this woman treated by others? How did Jesus treat her? How can we treat people who are different than we are, who do things we disapprove of, or are even our enemies, in ways that reflect how God sees all people? Life is the verses we, need, uh, we heard earlier. So boys and girls, I want you to be thinking about all of those things. And you'll find that Heifer if an International's work is guided by our 12 cornerstones and for just and sustainable development. These are the principles that have guided families towards self-reliance for more than 70 years. And one of those cornerstones is genuine need and justice. Genuine need and justice ensures that those who most in need are given priority. So those who are most in need are given priority in receiving animals and training. Genuine need exists everywhere, not just in developing countries. So does discrimination and bias. Be generous with your time and resources and be mindful of respecting people from different backgrounds. To learn more about our cornerstones of genuine need and justice, visit, and here, see if you can write this down, www.heifer.org slash cornerstones. All right, boys and girls, I hope you'll be thinking about that when you choose your animal and think about giving your gift. And we will talk more about the living gift market and how we're going to do it here at the church. Thank you. Goodbye until next week.